1922, a mysterious woman appeared in a hospital, claiming to be the lost princess Anastasia. The youngest Romanov girl was long thought to be dead, but when her family visited, they were deeply unsettled because the girl bore a striking resemblance to the little princess. The woman went by the name of Anna Anderson, and even people who had known Anastasia were convinced she had somehow survived her family's brutal execution. The mystery of the lost Princess Anastasia has persisted for decades. Why was Anastasia singled out as the princess that may have survived? Anastasia's parents, Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra, desperately hoped for a son. When Anastasia, their fourth daughter in a row, was born, they were devastated. It was a sorrowful beginning for a young princess destined to live a tragically short life. But Anastasia's troubles were only beginning. With her striking blue eyes and blonde hair, Anastasia was known for her infectious charm and sense of humor. Her wit and pranks often got her into trouble, and sometimes her mischievousness took a darker turn. On one disturbing occasion, the young Anastasia hid a rock inside a snowball and threw it at her sister Tatiana, who was injured. She would cheat, scratch, and kick anyone who angered her. Despite her bratty inclinations, Anastasia also suffered in private. The Grand Duchess had a very weak back and endured frequent massages for treatment which she loathed. She detested them so much that she would hide in a cupboard or under her bed to escape them. Anastasia may have also carried the Romanov family disease, hemophilia, a condition where blood does not clot well and can lead to excessive and life-threatening bleeding. Three years after her disappointing arrival, the Romanov's dreams finally came true. Anastasia and her sisters welcomed a baby brother named Alexei. With his arrival came a great sense of relief, which quickly turned to horror. After cutting Alexei's umbilical cord, the infant wouldn't stop bleeding. Worried about their sickly male heir, the Romanovs turned to a mysterious healer for help. This decision proved to be a huge mistake. When Anastasia's mother sought the healing powers of Grigory Rasputin, she had no idea that she had unwittingly welcomed a new and troubling presence into their lives. As a Russian peasant and holy man, Rasputin soon became closely associated with Anastasia and her siblings. The young princesses even came to call the bearded man our friend. Despite his unsettling appearance, Anastasia and her siblings felt completely at ease with Rasputin, and he forged a strong friendship with them. However, not everyone approved of him. Rasputin scandalized the children's governess Sofia Ivanovna Tucheva. Sofia witnessed Rasputin visiting the nursery while the girls were vulnerable, dressed only in their nightgowns. The Romanovs fired the governess, but she took her disturbing story on the road, informing other members of the royal family and sparking a scandal. Although Rasputin's relations with the girls were, by all accounts, innocent, Sophia's grievances caused an uproar. Eventually, this scandalous gossip spread into society with obscene cartoons circulating. The pictures showed Rasputin having inappropriate contact with the four grand duchesses and even the empress herself. However, despite the many accusations against the holy man, the Romanov family didn't completely sever ties with him. They continued to support him until his murder on December 17, 1916. Anastasia and her siblings felt the loss of Rasputin deeply. They all signed their names on an icon that Rasputin took to his grave. Tragically, Anastasia's heartbreak was only a prelude to even greater horrors to come. World War I turned Anastasia's life upside down, as it did for many others. 
Although they were too young to become Red Cross nurses, she and her sister Maria found their way to contribute. Anastasia brought her fun-loving attitude to the hospitals and played games with the wounded officers, leaving a lasting impression. One of the patients in the hospital, Felix Dassel, described Anastasia as having a laugh like a squirrel and a quick, tripping gait. From checkers to billiards, the young princess brought a sliver of sunshine into the shadow of loss. After Russia joined World War I, its people suffered extensive casualties and brutal food shortages, largely due to Tsar Nicholas's poor leadership. In February 1917, the Russian people revolted and eventually Anastasia's father had no choice but to abdicate his throne. Now the entire Romanov family was in more danger than ever before, and their future was terribly uncertain. Placed under house arrest, guards closely monitored their every move. In a short amount of time, Anastasia's home at the Alexander Palace had become her prison. But the greatest danger was yet to come. Everything changed when the Bolsheviks gained power. Suddenly, the stark reality of their situation grew much darker. Hatred for the Romanovs continued to rage, and Anastasia began to feel it. On March 1, 1918, Anastasia lost some of her royal privileges. She and her family switched to soldiers' rations and had to give up delicacies like coffee and butter. Held captive at the Apatev house, Anastasia's life hung in the balance. It was the beginning of the last and darkest chapter of her life. She couldn't access her belongings and wasn't allowed to speak any language other than Russian. Her entire family had their titles stripped. Officers confiscated much of the family's belongings, including money and even gold bracelets from the Grand Duchess's wrists. Anastasia felt utterly trapped, but that's when the imposed isolation took an incredibly disturbing turn. All the rooms her family occupied were sealed. There was only a single source of ventilation, a tiny window in Anastasia's bedroom. This led to a harrowing incident. Although they were strictly forbidden from looking out of the opening, Anastasia decided to peek out, and a sentry took aim and fired at her. Luckily, she narrowly avoided being hit. Anastasia's descent from princess to prisoner made her old life seem like a distant and blissful memory. Now, she couldn't even go to the bathroom without ringing a bell. The guards rationed her water and told her family they were no longer permitted to live like czars. She had zero contact with the outside world, no visitors, newspapers, or letters. It seemed like life couldn't get any worse, but she was mistaken. On July 17, 1918, the real horror began. At around midnight, the family doctor woke up Anastasia and her family and told them to dress quickly. The city had erupted into chaos, and they needed to move to the basement for safety. Unbeknownst to them, this was the beginning of the end. Anastasia followed her family into the cramped basement. The confusion was palpable, as her father demanded chairs for the Tsarina and the sickly Alexei. Although the guards granted his request, Nicholas failed to hear the chilling words spoken behind closed doors. The heir wants to die in a chair? Very well then, let him have one. Anastasia stood with her sisters as a guard informed them that a truck had arrived to carry them to a safer location. But this was a complete lie. Minutes later, guards entered the basement. One of them brandished a piece of paper and its contents were the last words the Romanovs ever heard. Nikolai Alexandrovich, in view of the fact that your relatives are continuing their attack on Soviet Russia, the Ural Executive Committee has decided to execute you. And that's when the bloodbath began, the tiny basement filled with smoke and dust, making it impossible to see. When the smoke cleared, the bodies of the Romanovs created a gruesome scene. Nicholas and Alexandra had died almost immediately, but Anastasia and her siblings were still alive. As they waited for the dust to settle, 
the executioners could hear the children moaning in pain. Why hadn't they died instantly like their parents? To finish the job, the executioners began to use their bayonets. However, even this brutality proved ineffective. Shots were fired at the children yet again, with Anastasia and Maria curled up against the wall, trying in vain to shield their heads. Why were the children so difficult to kill? Earlier, the Romanovs had devised a plan to smuggle the family jewels. They had sewn diamonds into their clothing, with Anastasia, Tatiana, and Maria carrying the most, a few pounds worth. While this protected them from bullets, it prolonged their suffering. Because of the hidden jewels, an execution that should have lasted seconds stretched to about 20 grueling minutes. Finally, after every Romanov lay unmoving, the guards stripped Anastasia and her family of their garments, loaded their corpses into a truck, and drove them to an abandoned mine shaft where the atrocities continued. After throwing the family down the mine shaft, guards poured sulfuric acid on the bodies, disfiguring them beyond recognition. Not all of the Romanovs ended up together. Alexei and one of his sisters were separated intentionally to confuse anyone searching for the royal family. And thus began the mystery of Anastasia. Throughout the 20th century, stories about the Grand Duchess Anastasia abounded, with many believing she had escaped the execution and survived. Numerous women claimed to be the lost princess. Between 1920 and 1922, one woman in particular fueled the frenzy surrounding Anastasia's mystery. Anna Anderson crafted a convincing story claiming that she had faked her death lying next to her deceased family members. According to Anderson, a sympathetic guard realized that the little princess still lived and helped her escape. Her fight to be recognized as Anastasia became a lifelong battle. However, it turned out to be a brilliantly constructed lie. In 1984, Anna Anderson passed away, but it wasn't until 1994 that a DNA test exposed her as an imposter. Anderson's tissue sample did not match the blood of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, a relative of the imperial family. This revelation was a crushing blow to her many supporters. While many Romanov imposters emerged throughout the 20th century, the hard truth was the most difficult to accept. Although the Romanov's burial site was discovered in 1981, its location was kept a secret due to communist rule in Russia. It wasn't until a decade later that it was finally excavated. The remains found in the grave added to the mystery and only nine bodies instead of the presumed eleven were unearthed. According to DNA and skeletal analysis, scientists claimed that Anastasia and Alexei were the two missing Romanovs, but they were mistaken. On August 23, 2007, a Russian archaeologist made another discovery regarding Anastasia. Two burned skeletons were found at a bonfire site around 50 feet from the original mass grave, and these bones belonged to a boy, undoubtedly Alexei, and a girl between the ages of 18 and 23. While Anastasia had been 17 at the time of her death, Maria had been 19. In the end, it was Maria, not Anastasia, who had been the missing princess. But there is one final disturbing detail to note. Although the controversy surrounding the Romanovs and Rasputin contributed to the Russian Revolution, the family never gave up their fondness for the despised holy man. After the Bolsheviks executed the family, they found Anastasia and the other grand duchesses with some very unique amulets. These amulets contained not only a prayer, but also a picture of Rasputin himself. The name Anastasia derives from the Greek word meaning resurrection, fitting considering all of the rumors about her survival, but she was actually named after the 4th century martyr Saint Anastasia. In 1981, 
the Grand Duchess and her entire family were canonized as holy martyrs themselves. Years after the terrible execution, the truth was finally revealed, and the mystery of the missing Grand Duchess was tragically solved. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe for more fascinating content.